This was the first time that I've ever been able to create listings like that. Up to now, everything was an accident. Now it became a science. It became a formula. It became a sequence of what to say in what order to set an appointment and get the listing agreement signed. Today, I'm going to tell you how I went from always being broke to making multiple six figures as a real estate agent. When I first started off, things were extremely inconsistent so that I would have to be doing part-time jobs like Uber, or I remember I was helping this guy screen print shirts. I was doing a lot of odd jobs to make sure my bills were being paid so I can continue being in real estate. And now I just can't imagine a life where I'm making less than $200,000 a year. There was a huge shift in the way I live my life and the way I think. And if I told my younger self that, I don't think that he would believe me. And in the case that you're in a similar situation, I wanna give you my story, tell you what's changed, um, what's affected me the most along the way to kind of give you a hope and maybe you can emulate some things or apply the same strategies and techniques that I did so that you can make more money faster. I got licensed around 2017 or 2018. I don't remember what year, but I, I got licensed and I joined a brokerage at Keller Williams. I remember getting super excited about joining and then being dropped off in the office and they're like, all right, Aaron, you're now officially part of the office. Go find homes to sell. And I just stood there feeling so lost. I didn't know I don't even know where to start. I'm looking around, there are people in the office, they're all calling phone numbers. And I'm like, where are those phone numbers coming from? Where are you, who are you calling? I'm calling leads. Where do you find leads? I had no idea where to start. I didn't even have any skills to make anything work. I, I just had a license, that's it. In the beginning, I tried everything. I was doing open houses, I was door knocking, I tried cold calling. I was, I, I was too scared to reach out to my sphere of influence because no one my age was buying houses and I didn't think that anyone would want to trust me to buy a house from me. So my first year, there was a lot of obstacles in my way. I lacked the skills, I lacked the knowledge, I lacked the confidence, and I had no guidance. What I ended up doing was door knocking every day. Every day at 4 p.m., I was like, people are home after 4 p.m., um, I'm gonna go door knock. So every day I would knock on 50 doors and it went okay. I was I was doing it, but my conversion rate wasn't good. I, I didn't know how to talk to homeowners in a way that made them want to give me the uh, their information. Eventually I got better and better and every other person that I spoke to ended up giving me their phone number and email. And that piled up and piled up and piled up. But I, here's the issue about not having mentorship. I didn't know how to follow up and I didn't have the confidence to follow up because I'm like, what do I even say to these people when I follow up? I don't, I don't know how to set an appointment and I don't even know if they would want to meet with me. So I, I had a lot of beliefs that stopped me from even following up to begin with. So my tactic basically was to just keep knocking on doors until someone was ready to buy a house, which in real estate, that's not how it works. 99% uh, of your transactions come from follow up. It's so rare for someone to be ready to go on that first interaction. But luckily, I somehow found someone that was ready to go when I first talked to them. This was six months in. At this point, I was door knocking for six months, making no money, door dashing on the side, and I finally found someone that wants to sell. My first year, I sold six homes, and they were all cold leads. They were all people that I found. I made $36,000. That was what it said on the Keller Williams like 1099 they gave me at the end of the year. I made $36,000 in my first year of real estate. That year was a grind, man. I, I, I look back and, I, and I, had, I was willing to put in the work, but I had no skills. So all my work was uphill. And the cool thing is when you have the skill of conversion, it's like you're running downhill. Because when you're, when you're putting in the work, you can capitalize on every opportunity. And when you don't know how to convert, everything's an accident and you don't want to be in that position. The, s the second year I started to cold call and I latched onto the cold calling because it was just like door knocking, but it was a lot faster and I didn't have to do it in the rain. So I really latched onto cold calling. The second year I struggled a lot too and everything was very inconsistent because I didn't know it at the time, but at the end of the, at the, end of the second year I would realize that a lot of my beliefs went against what I wanted, which was success. And I had a fear of success, which is terrible to have. I had a fear of failure, which is also 
horrible to have. I think a fear of failure is so detrimental to someone's progress in life because when you're afraid to fail, that'll make you self-sabotage and not want to do the things you need to do in order to get to where you're at. So if you have a fear of failure, you'll probably want to avoid making follow-up calls because you're like, what if they don't answer the phone or what if they don't want to talk with me? If you have a fear of failure, you'll, you'll probably not want to go door knock. You'll probably not want to um, try to cold call. You, you won't want to learn the listing agreement, listing presentation because you're like, I, I, they might not even want to do this. You're going to unconsciously stop yourself from doing what you need to do to find the success because you're afraid to fail. I really think the fear of failure is one of the worst limiting beliefs to have because that just by itself stops you from even trying because you're afraid to fail. And even if you do try, you're not fully in it because you know in the back of your mind you're gonna fail. So my second year was also very inconsistent. I would take listings, but they were all on accident. I didn't know how to make it repeatable. At, at this point, I felt so close to figuring it out. I knew I was on the right track because I was cold calling. I just didn't know how to make things consistent and repeatable. At this time, I was learning from like people like Ricky Carruth and Ryan Serhant and, and Brian Casella. And Brian Casella is great, but Ricky Carruth and Ryan Casella, they don't teach you, they don't teach you the dialogue to become a closer. And I, I was extremely frustrated at that. I knew that there were people out there that were setting appointments like that, listing appointments like that, but Ricky Carruth's style was very much like, ah, oh, how's the kids? Oh, great, the weather's great. Uh, reach out if you need anything. Hey, just checking in. Do you, how, do you need anything? No? All right. And that's just leaving it up to the lead to make something happen when I should be the one making something happen. And I didn't know how to do that. I, and I couldn't find any resource to teach me how to do that. So it was extremely frustrating. I got rid of my limiting beliefs in my third year by hiring a coach and mentor. It was, it was a pretty crazy process, but I got rid of my limiting beliefs and that allowed me to believe that I could do it. That allowed, that allowed me to believe that I was deserving of everything. I, nothing, I was no different than any other person that has found success in the world. And that allowed me to work with a kind of determination that I've never had before, with a, a, a kind of work ethic that had no resistance to it. And up to now, I, I've been working with a bunch of resistance. After I got rid of my limiting beliefs, I joined a team of top producers over at Compass. And these guys were in suits. They were taking a lot of social media videos around luxury real estate. And I thought, oh, if I join these guys, I'm going to learn the secrets to learning how to, how to find clients on social media. I won't have to cold call anymore. All I, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a luxury agent now that I, now that I know how to post on Instagram. Six months later, I realized, wow, these guys don't know anything. They've got nothing to offer. They've, they've got no actionable steps that I can follow. These guys have just been doing it for a long time and they just post pretty pictures on Instagram. There's really nothing more to it. That's when I realized there is no secret sauce. There's no secret to getting deals. It's, it's really just about consistency. And this was when I became a little more consistent with my business. I, I was cold calling just, I was, I was just cold calling all the time. This was when business was ramping up for me. Um, I was consistent with my cold calling, which was great. However, I was still setting appointments on accident. I, it, nothing was super consistent as it should be. I was just putting in a lot of work and that was creating results. In my third year of real estate, I made $150,000 off of cold calling, just off of sheer determination. No skill, just sheer determination. So you can do it. You can, you can make money in real estate if you believe in yourself and you have sheer determination. But once you, w once you add in that little skill part, that's when things take off. At this point, I didn't have the skill yet, but I knew I was missing it. So the next year is when everything changed. I joined EXP under a downline where they they were teaching you how to close. And I've never seen anything, I've never seen any kind of training like this. I, I sat in one of the trainings and I was like, this is, this is what I've been looking for for years. And so I joined that downline within EXP immediately. Also COVID hit. I was in Seattle. I, I didn't want to be a part of COVID in Seattle. It was terrible. So I moved my business over to Texas. And this is where everything changed. 
I knew nobody in Texas. I just moved there to get some more freedom. And I was so stressed because I was starting my business completely from scratch and I knew nobody there. And I needed to learn how to create business now. So me and my coach over at EXP worked one-on-one -on -one every day for months until I learned how to, how to set appointments on a dime. So over the next six months I was licensed at Texas, I took nine listings and they were all expired listings. This was the first time, this was the first time that I've ever been able to create listings like that. Up to now, everything was an accident. It was pure luck, it was pure sheer determination and, and willpower and just waiting for the right person to pick up and say, oh yeah, I might sell in three months. And then it was that struggle of setting that appointment, which I didn't really exactly know how to do. It was, everything was an accident. Now it became a science, it became a formula, it became a sequence of what to say, in what order, to set an appointment and get the listing agreement signed. This year in Texas was when I learned how to create something that was repeatable. And as soon as I did that, I started making YouTube videos about it. And I was bringing on agents um, under the revenue share model at EXP and teaching them how to do it too. So while I was taking listings and learning how to do this, all of my agents were also learning how to take listings because they were all new too. And I had, I had handfuls of agents taking one to four new listings a month, every month as brand new real estate agents. At a certain point, uh, the Yoon Group was taking 20 plus listings a month. We were closing over 20 transactions a month. Uh, and this was pretty consistent. During this process, I really learned how to deep dive into an agent's business, find their problems, learn how to tweak it, teach them exactly what they need to know to fix their mistakes, and get them along the path of taking one to four new listings a month. After I brought on 30 agents, my, my production took a step back and I started focusing on the production of my agents and I scaled my business pretty quick. After a while, my agent testimonies became very consistent. Of course, it depended on how much work they put in. Not everyone found success because they weren't willing to put in the work. But the ones that were willing to put in the work were finding massive success. For example, I've got a guy named Jason Liu over in California. He was a buyer's agent with an inconsistent business before he started working with me. Um, and three months into working with me, he took 25 listings. I've got a guy named John over in Texas. He came to me and said, Aaron, I'm a brand new agent. I've only closed like two deals and I need to, be, I need to make this work fast. Within one month of working with me, he learned how to take consistent listings. Last time I spoke to him, he says he was on track to take 50 listings uh, this year. So that's crazy. After a while, I became extremely confident in my coaching skills because I was able to create this for so many agents. The first three years of my business were extremely frustrating because I lacked any skill that allowed me to create any consistency and control over my business. Everything was an accident. If I had access to the coaches and mentors that I got in my fourth year, my first three years would have been a completely different outcome. That's why I created the Conversion Academy. Conversion Academy is my coaching program where I teach you how to take one to four new listings a month. It's everything that I wish I knew at the beginning and I teach it directly to you. So that's my story as a real estate agent. I hope you got some kind of value out, out of this. I, I want you to know that it's only a matter of time before you figure it out, but you can shorten that period of time by working with the right people. So you got two choices, figure it out yourself or shorten that time by working with the right people. If you made it to this point, I wanna know who you are because I'm always interested in knowing Who's made it to this point? Comment down below. I want to make six figures if you made it to this point. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next video.